G'day guys, this is Staff Sarge with a rundown of MechWarrior 4 Mercs. I figured I'd get this out there since my LP is done and dusted, aside from any form of multiplayer shenanigans uh, due to issues. Anyway, I'd figure I'd condense my opinions on this game into this video, so if you watch the series or read the Summy Awful thread, shouldn't be really anything new here. But otherwise, let's talk about robots. First up, the MechWarrior series. In the 80s, a company made a tabletop game about giant walking tanks blowing the living shit out of each other, with the backstory being humans get FTO, colonize space, centralized government fails hard so knights and kingdoms take control, then everyone fights everyone. The first MechRoy game revolved around a royal trying to reclaim his blood right or something. I don't know, I never actually played it. The second involved space furries fighting each other in duels, and by duels I mean huge battles with lots of tanks and robots. The third is honestly the best, and I will LP the living shit out of this if I ever get the bloody thing working. The fourth was when Microsoft took over, the result being much prettier, but it plays less like a robot sim and more like an action game, with a few other things that brought it down a little bit. And then finally Mercs, which is the standalone expansion to number 4. Mercenaries had a very simple storyline. After the last attempt at the central government, everyone's back to killing each other, which makes it a seller's market for freelance military units. Spectre, the guy you play, is a new Merc with a new company, and you want to make it big by taking contracts and kicking ass. Till he gets involved in a big coup d'etat after two of the biggest factions, the Larins and Fed Sons, decide to break their alliance. Ultimately, you can choose who to side with, which really only changes the last half dozen or so operations and maybe some of the equipment you get. The gameplay is the same as Mechory 4 Vengeance, but with alterations to the strategic and logistical side. Namely, you don't need to rely on salvage, and by that I mean random dice rolls deciding what stuff you get after a mission. Since you can now buy and sell gear, plus you also need to manage finances because of that. This on its own really helps the game by giving you more options to customize while also putting restrictions based on how well you play, since if you need to keep repairing mechs or keep having them destroyed and unsalvageable, you're gonna have issues. Aside from that, you also have a choice in which operations to take, of which there's around 45 in total. The only complaint is that there's no randomness to these ops. As fun as they all are, the replayability is severely limited, since they never change aside from a few player choice moments. Having some generated missions randomly appearing, or even better a proper fully dynamic campaign would be fantastic, although the latter is probably asking too much. But hey, we can still get Macquarie 5. Uh, the actual combat is very well done. It's the same as Vengeance, but tweaked a little bit. For a start, the operations are much shorter, placing the player close to the action at the start and then proceeding at a quick pace. Vengeance had some pacing issues, which dragged it down as an action game, but Mercs gets it more or less perfect. Even driving a slow assault mech doesn't require much time to get stuck into the enemy. The fighting is also fast-paced, with the weapons able to dish out enough damage to let a player nail an enemy quickly, assuming their aim is good. If you're a bit shaky, the mechs can take a bit to put down, since it does use the classic biotic armor distribution system. For those unfamiliar, each section of a mech is armored. Punch through the armor, destroy the internals, and that section is dead. In Mercs, you need to knock out the center torso, which is often the most heavily armored section, both of the legs or the head, which is very hard to hit. Arms and side torsos carry weapons, so knocking them out can be useful, but it won't kill them. That said, if you run around with an arm-only mech and they get blown off, frustration doesn't quite cover the feeling. And this is why in previous games, you would load all weapons into the torso. Vengeance disabled that with a hardpoint system for customizing mechs, with certain weapons only fitting in certain areas. They have two criteria. The first one is space. Heavier weapons need more space. And also type. Uh, either energy weapons, which don't use ammo and generate a lot of heat, missiles, which are fairly light, but they need ammo and also generate heat, and ballistics, which do good damage at no heat, but are heavy and need ammunition. This system also gives more variety in the chassis selection, since you could choose between, say, a mad dog, which is built around the big missile racks, a bushwhacker with a mix of small hard points for all three types, or the hellbringer, which comes with omni mounts, which allows you to take any weapon. In the arms. There are a few other things that need to be kept in mind. Engine weight defines how fast the mech is, with smaller mechs needing less to get more. Heat sinks are needed to manage any heat generator from weapon fire, especially lasers. If you have too few, then your mech will shut down. Armor can be fully customized in all sections, so if you have no weapons in one arm, you can de-armor it and use the weight for improving other sections. Again, center torso, you want most of it. Finally, equipment. Beagle Active Pro for improving sensors, ECM for jamming, IFF Jammer, which is useless in single player, Gyro Stabilizer, which reduces knockback, AMS to shoot down incoming guided missiles, improved optics to give a greater zoom function, and jump jets to make your mech fly, in much the same way a brick does. So, to close out this video, and ideally the LP as well, Mercs is a fun robot stomping game about taking contracts, wrecking shit, and getting paid. It's a decade old, but still looks and plays the part, especially if you get the high def pack and the mech tech fan mod thingy. The problem currently is getting a copy. If you can find a hard copy of the original game, then you're set. If you want mech tech, 
Ah, uh, you're kind of out of luck. The crew who did the work and made available has taken all their stuff down due to legal issues with PGI and Mechwar Online and all that kind of stuff. Which is kind of a disappointment, especially since I made this LP to pimp out a game that I really enjoyed that everyone could get. Oh well, at least it's still Mechwar Online, which despite a few issues, uh, namely the pop time bullshit, which thankfully has now been fixed, it's actually a lot of fun. If you can't find Mercs at all, hit up PGR's release, grab a mech that isn't a metal baby, and go to town. Staff Sarge out.